big um, this is a big event for our for our grade level today. This has been preparation for an entire quarter to really set true purpose for writing. Our writing genre last quarter was argument and a topic came up of which type of water is better, bottled or tap. And we decided to turn this project into something real world and very relevant to our school. Can we introduce her, please come up? Now all 160 sixth graders participated in this project. Everybody did preparation for writing, everybody did research, and all of these students' essays were chosen as runners-up for presenting today, and a handful combined theirs to create speeches today. So I'll just introduce some of our participants today. Um, we have our protesters in the back, Hannah, Bella, Elizabeth, Abby, Emily, Drake, Abby, Simranji, Manuel, Angelica, Alice, Sarah, Lindsay, Gabriel, Amir, Mitchell, Nicole, Jonathan, Adam, Alan, Mary, I'm sorry, Mason, Good morning, my name is Emmanuel. I would like to give you some information about how this idea for this water rally came about. In quarter two, our sixth grade class studied and practiced the art of argumentative, writing in Mrs. Robillard's class. We researched ideas on a topic and studies Arthur's <coughs> technique in debating ideas. The debate we studied about was the question about which type of water is better, bottled or from tap. We looked at issues regarding health, safety, environmental compact, cost, and personal preference. After reading two articles, The Story of Bottled Water by Annie Leonard and Bottled Water Matters by the International Bottle, Bottled Water Association, we chose the side we agree with and used evidence from the text to write our own argument regarding this topic. We also read about the third article which came from the United Nations outlining basic human rights to clean, safe water worldwide. As we prepared our arguments, it was brought to our attention that the plans for the new classroom wing did not include access to water in all of the classrooms. The following three groups of students will present their ideas regarding this issue. They have prepared a speech which came from main points from their argument zero. require water, but it's not planned for our needs to be met. So, for this reason, we need water to be installed in the new classrooms. If you don't install tap, we will be forced to bring individual water bottles to school. In our country, people are using half a billion bottles a week, yet most are being downcycled instead of being recycled. Sources say for every six bottles used, only one is being recycled. Bottled water companies advertise their water with glaciers and mountains, but really they are using those to cover to cover up for factories and landfills where the water bottles that take two minutes to drink will sit for thousands of years to decay. We as an agricultural magnet school would not want to be known for this. Another reason we need tap water in classrooms is to avoid classroom disruption. As the plan stands now, when students need water, they will need to leave the classroom to find a fountain. Not only will this disrupt the class, it will result in loss of class time and we will struggle with lessons. Please install a tap in order to minimize the surplus. By installing water fountains and sinks in the classes, we, we can save money as a school. According to the story, bottled, the story of bottled water by Annie Leonard, bottled water costs 2,000 times more than tap water. With the money saved, we can put it towards education and field trips. With the approval of installing 
tap water, we can save, we can save, I'm sorry, we can reduce cost and keep our students healthy. These are crucial reasons we advocate for tap water. It's cost efficient and environmentally positive. Okay, so I'm, I'm Brooke Ashton, and I am the 
Bullard trustee over this area and over and over board, over over bear board bear. See how bad that is. I'm on the board. This is my counterpart, Janet Ryan, who is another trustee in Fresno Unified, which is over the Hoover area, and her daughter is. Excuse me. No, it's. See what a compliment I gave her. Her daughter, her granddaughter, is a sixth grade teacher here. <laughs> So we, we as, as, board, as, um, as board members for Fresno Unified came here because we heard that it was a very, very important issue to bear to figure out why we didn't have water in the classrooms, whether it's bottled or whether it's tap, right, from the fountain. And so we, we got together as, as board members and we told the architect We want to figure out why this is going on, right? And so the architect's here today, and then along with Mr. Shipstead, who is the building coordinator for Fresno Unified. So I, I think what we're going to do is we're going to, this, this is America, so this is the greatest country in the world. And one thing we know how to do is vote, right? We know how to vote. So how many for bottled water? Fifteen, maybe, right? Maybe twenty. How many want a drinking fountain in those in that building? Mrs. Miss Ryan, what do you think? Well, I think uh, it certainly looks overwhelming, but we have to consider all kinds of things. First of all, we have to find out why we didn't have water put in there in the first place. Uh, is it too expensive? Uh, is that going to set a precedent for other schools? And how much will it drive up the cost? So there are many things that we as trustees have to think about. Uh, and um, I'd like to hear from the architect and find out, number one, if it's feasible. And then we'll have a little confab here and uh, figure out what to do. Initially, we obtained direction from the. Okay. Uh, usually, we uh, when we meet with the district staff on facilities, we decide on the uh, scope of work. Okay. We decide on the scope of work, and the uh, uh, not every classroom in Fresno Unified has sinks at the middle school level, and um, so that's part of the reason. But um, every, I do work for a number of districts throughout the valley, and it's usually not common to have sinks, uh, lecture types, uh, sinks in lecture type classrooms. Uh, we, uh, so we just need direction from, from the facilities department to install the sinks. And uh, we have, currently we have water in the uh, labs and then the functional skills classroom as well it uh, would not be costly to extend the lines and provide a sink an accessible sink and a, a bubbler at each sink for use by the students and it, it would make sense from the regard that the students don't have to leave the uh, let me ask mr shipstead is it possible to even do what we're talking about doing <laughs> It is possible. Uh, you guys put on a great presentation today. I want to compliment both sides. Very convincing arguments. And as Mr. Ashkin said, this is a great country and you know everybody gets their input. Uh, my role, fortunately, is once it's on the plans, I put it in. So it is doable and your timing is good. It's not too late to incorporate it into the plans. So we'll have a discussion now and uh, we will get back to you here in, oh, Valerie, you're up. Give us, give us, give us a couple minutes, kids, after Valerie's
you guys to know something that we have the superintendent over facilities here today, Karen Temple. And we'd like Ms. Temple to come up and be part of this conversation because this is a big deal. Decision. Your principal is going to speak. This is so exciting for me. Common Core in action. I wanted to let you know that the panel conferred and everyone agrees that it is in the best interest, uh, the long-term interest of the educational environment for all of you to have drinking fountains in the new yeah. classroom. facilities, Ms. Ryan and Mr. Ashian, our board members, Mr. Shipstead, our wonderful project manager, and Mr. Gonzalez, the very talented architect, for taking the time to come here and to hear you today. I am so proud of each and every one of you. Continue to use your voices throughout your lives to help yourselves and help others. We're really, really proud of you. And how about a round of applause for our sixth grade teachers? Thank you for coming and taking time out of your busy days and busy schedules to really come see these kids, hear what they have to say. These are their words from their research. This is their issue. It started out as which side is better and it turned into how can this improve our school. And I am so proud of each and every one of you. You all were part of this. Our voice in numbers is a lot stronger. All of your voices were in these three speeches today. So give yourselves a round of applause.
So we look forward to looking at the new blueprints when they are ready and watching the new construction as when it starts as we've been enjoying this one. And on that note, this concludes our assembly. Woo! <laughs>